My name is Nigel. You can tweet me on Nigel Jacobs Hero. I'm going to surprise uh, you guys. Now, I'm going to start with a story before I get into AI and scare you guys. So, how did stories actually begin? Stories actually began with the caveman, where art started to imitate life. Our real life is what we do every day. Expressing it is a form of art. It, it continued with the fine art. It continued in the movies. It certainly continued with how technology has embraced life and art both. If you look at this image, okay, the image is supposed to be moving, I don't know. But if you look at this image, what you, what you would see was a physical paper moving. And this is called skeuomorphism. Basically what it means is you take inspiration from real life, create digitally. Oscar Wilde, it, Oscar Wilde was a poet who came up in, with an essay called The Decay of Lives, which touched mo the whole world. And he said something really interesting. What he said was that we have reached a point in life where life starts to imitate art much more than art imitates life. And what I mean by this is the concept of hipsterism, the concept of Kardashians, the concept, the concept of fashionists, and all the decay that followed, the concept of terrorism, all of it has been embraced from art. Our lives are what we copy from uh, expressions. And we are at this intersection. And this is actually both exciting, but also dangerous. Do you know when was the first time we saw somebody go to the rock? We saw a rocket go to the moon. It was in 1902 in a French film known as A Trip to the Moon. It took us 70 years to go later to the moon. What came first? Art. What came first? A concept, a story. I'm sure all of you know Spidey here. Spidey, in his comic in 1977, there was a villain who wanted to figure out each time when Spider-Man would give him a surprise visit. And what he did is, he he branched an uh, ankle bracelet onto Spider-Man so that he could know if Spider-Man would give him a surprise visit. Now, around the 80s, the US government was having an issue where they were having a lot of inmates coming in and they wanted to keep them at home. And what they did was, they actually started bracing them with ankle bracelets. What came first? Art. Have you seen this movie? The 2001 eight Space Odyssey. In this movie, if you have noticed, they had the first iPad, they had the first face, FaceTime, they had the first Siri. When did we get this? To 2010? What came first? Art. Now if I, if I ask you guys, what is AI? A lot of you guys would give me a picture like this. Thanks to Art. But I try to you know, think of AI as a concept where it is a research and development of machines or systems that we think are smart. So artificial intelligence was actually coined by a, by a scientist named John McCarthy. And he and his mathematicians with around four to five MB of data uh, rolled out the first artificial intelligence. Today, we use around 4.4 CETA bits of data and 90% of the data was captured in the last two years. And we got to thank you, you gamers, because you guys have pushed the processing power and the storage capacities. I'm sure a lot of you must have known this game. It is a famous game with Gary Kasparov with the Deep Blue. Gary Kasparov challenged Deep Blue saying that there is no way an AI system could challenge a human being. And he was actually right for the first game and that was the last game he actually was able to win against an AI. What he said later was that the system was so smart that he couldn't even, it didn't even play like a machine. It, it, it was something that he couldn't describe. Five years ahead, we have IBM Watson armed with four million Wikipedia pages. And we can clearly see, you know, against the two world champions, how will the, how will the one? The game of Go. I don't know how many of you know the game of Go, 
but game of go is considered as one of the hardest ai challenges to solve let me make it let me make it a little more simpler for you guys in a chess game the average move a person makes is around 40 moves but in the game of go it is 200 more times so you know how much more processing power you need and data scientists said you know it, it we don't think it's going to happen in our time but as you can see in the picture this was the 18 times world champion being defeated in a 3 day continuous match and what is more interesting than all this the ai actually started developing its own strategies and players were actually learning from the ai but wait ai is not only about games what else can ai do well in the field of uh, computer vision before computer vision was all about just identifying objects but today our ai systems can understand objects its environment it is being de deployed in one example if you guys follow snapchat you should know that snapchat is actually rolling out a feature where you can just you know point your camera at whatever jeans or whatever chair it is and it will actually recommend you an amazon link to it in the field of uh, healthcare the london medical school a, the team of scientists from there they made an artificial intelligent program that would run 30000 data points on a heart and it could predict up to one month in advance before you would get pulmonary hypertension and wait let me tell you something even more cooler google this february 4th google actually launched an artificial intelligence system that it can actually look into your eye and actually tell you the situation of your heart ibm for oncology now as you can see the study for pathologists is a group of scientists that uh, group of world class surgeons and that is the ai model when both of them came together you can see the error rate fell down to 0.5% what this actually what this graph shows us is that we can use ai to actually enhance our capabilities i'm sure all of you must be hearing on the frenzy of self driving cars tesla this is waymo google self driving car and like most of you know hardware is much more expensive than software creating a hardware product and what google did is they actually made an ai software which um they actually yeah sorry they what they did is they made this ai software which you could deploy into games and instead of deploying it in real life it understood the whole topography and the things it had to do and then it it was then deployed into the real life and what you could see later was that now we have self driving cars now legalized in in dubai in U us okay but this is all cool but how is ai affecting our life well if i'm sure all of you must have flown on a flight and what airbus says is that the average time a pilot flies actual flies a flies a plane is only around 7 minutes the rest of the time is actually taken care of by the machine okay now i heard a lot of cool stuff what can i do with ai well uae is one of the country now third uh, the third most po powerful country in ai and i thought maybe if i could share with you a few of the things they are looking into so then maybe you guys could also try to do something in india in the field of transport they are trying to come up with method ai programs that could avoid or reduce accidents and also the traffic issues in the field of healthcare how to come up with better cure methods and to prevent it in advance in the field of space on how to roll out more accurate experiments in the field of renewable energy how to effectively uh, re how to effectively use the resources but what but what what is the point of all this our forefathers have created a very strong legacy for us so far and right now all the i mean most of the countries are running for this ai power who can be the next strongest ai power and the thing is ai can either become a really deadly weapon or it can be the or it can be the next greatest hope for humanity and we 
as the next problem solvers. And I believe that all our small contributions can actually make a really big impact to it. And today I would like to close this talk by hoping that you guys take the effort so that we have a utopian future and not a dystopian one. Thank you.